Hey guys, and welcome to Petrol Ped, and welcome to a little bit of a road trip. And finally, I can bring you my impressions of this amazing Audi TTS Coupe that I've been driving around in for the last two or three weeks, actually, thanks to Audi UK. Mrs. Petrol Ped and I, along with the Pooches, are going on the second leg of our holiday down to our home in Cornwall. She's actually in the S4 and I'm in a TTS, so it should be quite a good comparison. We have two beautiful daughters. Turn that off. So stay tuned because on my way down there, myself and the petrol pup are going to tell you all about this Audi TTS because I've learned an awful lot about it. I've done lots and lots of miles and this film is all about my findings of living with this car because I've been very, very surprised. So welcome to the wonderful traffic that is the UK. Now I probably need to explain a few things before I get telling you about this car. And the first thing is, why on earth we're driving to Cornwall in two cars? Well, uh, it's very simple. Um, halfway through this week, I need to go here to Wales actually to do some work and um, we needed to have two cars with us. So we thought we'd take two, that's why. Um, so we've also split up the pup. So I have uh, the petrol pup with me and Mrs. Petroped has the petrol pooch with her. Um, and that's pretty much it. So I'm gonna break this film down into little sections, different things about what I've discovered about this car. And the first thing we're gonna talk about is practicality. Now I did mention in the video I put out when Audi UK dropped this car off to me a couple of weeks ago that I had had two TTs before and they were both roadsters because we've always had a convertible and a practical car in the family. At the moment our practical car is the S4 currently being driven very quickly by Mrs. Petroped and that is full of stuff uh, and it is brilliant. And my car's always been the soft top, slightly less practical. And therefore, I've always wanted the rag top, sun in your hair, soft top motoring experience. And therefore, the TT Coupe never really did it for me. I never thought I'd get on with it. However, I have to say the standout thing I love about this car the most since I've had it is the fact it's a coupe and it's practical. And the, the, there's so much luggage space, so much practicality. And I love it very much. Um, the boot is huge um, okay sorry it's it's big uh, i've currently got it absolutely full of stuff and i've still got the seats up in the back i would say though that those seats in the back i don't think they're that practical as seats necessarily i certainly wouldn't want to sit in there myself if you had kids they might be okay but when you drop the seats um, i've got my bike in the back i did have to take both wheels off to get the bike in the back but there was still plenty of room for other bags and stuff so i just find it a really practical car and yet it's drop dead gorgeous to look at from the outside and it goes brilliantly and it drives lovely and it's small and nimble and yeah practicality wise massive tick it's not as practical as the s4 clearly that's an estate car but it's not bad and therefore, I would now consider having a TT Coupe. <laughs> well, I never thought I would do. The next thing I love about this car is just how it drives. It, it has a really lovely, predictable balance to it. It's quite a small, nimble car. Uh, it's got plenty of grunt. It's not as spiky as the RS model with 400 brake. This has got just over 300 horsepower, which is ample. Most of the time on the dual carriageway kind of cruising type driving, I'm just in fully uh, you know, automatic mode. I've got an individual setting. I've set everything to dynamic except the suspension, which I've set to soft. That's a fairly standard thing I do whenever I jump in an Audi with a drive select program, to be honest. And then if I want to push on, actually we found this amazing little bit of road skirting around Salisbury because there's a big traffic block up in Salisbury. And if you just pull the selector back, stick it in sport mode, you get much more response. So driving this car is pretty much exactly how I would drive my S4. Um, it's just not quite as punchy as the S4, but if you've got a nice long flowing bit of A road or B road, it's such a, <laughs> such a brilliant little car. And I reckon, 
to get from A to B quickly in this car, you would be pushed to be beaten by many things. With the Quattro all-wheel drive, I had a, uh, a really nice journey um, through Wales uh, the first week I had the car, and the weather was atrocious. Uh, and I left Wales quite late, um, and therefore the roads were quite quiet, but just really wet and horrible. Uh, and this thing cross country in wet conditions was absolutely stellar. I mean, really, really good. Uh, and having had that R8 recently, and one of my comments in that was I just thought that was far too much car for most circumstances. This is that perfect sweet spot. Let's face it, it's got half the power of the R8 V10 performance. But you, you certainly don't find yourself wanting. You can really exploit it. You can get down a road like this and really push on. Uh, and the drive is absolutely sensational. It's a brilliant thing to drive this car. Very rewarding. It's not as rewarding as a pure rear wheel drive car, something like, I don't know, an M2 or something, but I'm an Audi fan. I like my Audis, my four wheel drive, that safe, predictable, um, perfect for getting you quickly cross country. Then this car, again, <laughs> massive boxes tick. I'm happy to report that the petrol pup is getting far, far better at going in the car. Um, once we put a little harness on, she's got a racing harness there. She's absolutely happy as you like. She is quite tired today, which is a good thing. So yeah, she likes the, the TTS. She really likes this little bit here. It's a fantastic chin rest, apparently. What do you reckon, pups? Yeah, she likes that. Good chin rest. The next thing I'm gonna talk about is just general fuel economy and running costs. And I know when you buy a sporty car like this, that is not the top of your agenda. You'd probably buy the diesel TT if you were really super worried about fuel economy. But this little two liter turbocharged engine, it produces 300 horsepower. That is plenty of go. So if you are a little bit um, overzealous, shall we say, your fuel economy does dip a little bit, does suffer a little bit, but so far I have done 1,700 miles in this car in the last three weeks, and my average MPG is 28.7, and I don't think that's too bad, and I haven't been driving like a saint either, I've been reasonably vigorous in my um, attacking of the B-roads and general driving conditions, so I am pretty sure that if I took my time and put it in the economy drive select mode, I'll get, I could easily get that up into the mid 30s. I'm pretty sure of that. But the way I've been driving it, I think 28, that's not too bad. When you fill the car up, you'll get about 350 miles of range, which again, that makes it very usable. So I'm currently on a journey to Cornwall. It's 230 miles, something like that. I can do that without stopping, easy. Um, and I think that makes this car really, really usable. So economy, not bad. Unfortunately, economy, when you're trying to keep up with Mrs. Petroped, is quite challenging. She kind of got ahead of me and then I got stuck behind someone who was insisting on doing 45 miles an hour on a 60 mile an hour national speed limit road, which just does my head in. Anyway, um, yeah, that S4 is a mightily, mightily quick car, but this thing has absolutely no problem keeping up with it. I guess power to weight ratio is probably reasonably similar, but yes, Mrs. Petroped clearly has her lead line driving boots on today. She's on it, people definitely on it. So as we've now been in the car for a little over three hours, I thought it would be good to report on the comfort of the seats. Now, these seats are actually exactly the same as we've got in the S4. I have to say, ours don't have this bright red trim on them, which 
I kind of understand how this press car has been configured. It's got this beautiful blue exterior colour and then it's got red brake calipers and I'm pretty sure this red interior trim has been chosen to match up with the brake calipers and maybe the little bit of red on the uh, TTS badge is not for me however. <laughs> But I do get it a little bit. But the seats are very comfy and they're adjustable. I, you know, I've, I've, I've been sat in them for three hours. I've done longer journeys than that in them. I, I really, really like them. I think they look fantastic as well. Red or not, they still look cool. So yeah, comfort of the seats is brilliant. And then just the room in here. I'm a really tall guy, six foot three, uh, 34 inch inside leg for those of you who really want to know and I've got plenty of room. In fact, I don't actually have my seat all the way back. Look, there we go, I've gone back a little bit there. Because I like to get a little bit more comfy. I do find, interestingly, that the steering wheel is as close to me as I'll get. And with my length of legs, I am a little bit at a, re uh, at a reach, but not too much. So driving position-wise, I just like to have that wheel a little bit closer to me, but that's being super picky. I'm still keeping up with Mrs. Petroped. Um, now, in terms of, this isn't a full review of this car. I reviewed this car when it first came out, maybe two years ago, so I don't want to repeat myself on that one. Other things I've kind of learned living with the car over such a long period of time, doing so many miles, is the MMI system. To be honest, it's almost identical to the S4. You just don't have the secondary screen on the dash. It's very easy to program stuff into the sat-nav. Interestingly, this sat-nav, uh, this car doesn't have the SIM card that connects it to the outside world like mine does, which brings down a little bit more information for your sat-nav. So I've got full Google Maps integration and you get all the really up-to-date traffic and travel. And really interestingly, we both got our sat-nav plugged into the same destination, yet we did have different destinations and routes. And we've actually ended up following the one that the S4 had, and I think we probably saved a bit of time on that. So that's quite an interesting thing comparing, if you like, two Audi sat-navs um, on the same journey. Everything else, really easy. I'm at currently playing some music through the Bluetooth of my uh, iPhone into the car because there's nothing on the radio. Uh, stereo quality is very, very good. This has got the Bang & Olufsen system in it, which is excellent. Um, so those are the things you really want when you're going to do long miles in a car. The question is, after 1,700 miles and three weeks of driving, is it all roses in the garden? Am I just going to gush about this car, or is there anything that, that I don't like, anything that I'm not that impressed with? Well, there are a couple of things, and the first one is a bit daft, really. If it's been raining, especially if it's been raining quite heavily, and you open the tailgate, the water basically drips down the side of the tailgate into the contents of the boot. And I don't think that's very good. Other things, I'm not a massive fan of this. So when, if you want to put a water bottle there, I mean, it's a really solid um, you know, place to put it, but I don't like the fact you have to have this central armrest up. And if you've got a big water bottle like this one, it doesn't actually fit in that bit there. I mean, that, that, that bit there is fine for, um, like a half litre Evian bottle or something but if, it, if you've got a big kind of water sports water colour that's it's no good um, apart from that really in here I'm struggling I there aren't a great deal of things I don't like about this car clearly I am a massive Audi fan which helps um, I'm sure some of you may well think that driving's a little bit I don't know diluted a bit sterile but I actually quite like that it's a safe fast car this and I I like that as a daily that's the kind of car I want if I wanted something edgy and something that was going to kind of keep me on the edge of my seat and have the hair stand up on the back of my arms when I'm driving I wouldn't buy one of these but if I wanted something where I know I'm going to get from A to B really really quickly whether it's raining or wet or dry I have this every time I just remembered one other little niggle I have about the car is the seat belt position 
because of this kind of fixed position here, uh, I guess in the hatch uh, and in my S4, you've got the ability to move that up and down slightly to adjust and you can't do it in the TT. What that means is when I'm sat how I am, the seat belt tends to just sort of drop down over my shoulder like that. And, and I don't like that very much at all. I really want it to be there. So you do find yourself moving it upwards a little bit. And I know that's because of the position of my seat and, and the tallness or the, the height of my body but I just like a bit of adjustment and because of the design of the car, you can't have that. So a little niggle, it does get on my wick a little bit. I could live with it, but I just it just doesn't feel comfortable when the seatbelt starts to drop down like that. We are so nearly there, less than a mile to go. Oh, it's been a pretty good run now, actually, considering there was predicted traffic chaos. I think that's taken us a smidge over four hours, which is pretty good, really. But welcome to our second home. Welcome to Mevagissi. A little bit of Cornish heaven to escape to every now and again. See, Mrs. Petroped is from Cornwall. In fact, she's from St. Austell. And our first ever house was in Mevagissi, so about a year ago we decided to take the plunge and buy somewhere here. And it's now our little escape to come for a week's break. Leave work behind, come down here. However, <laughs> the reason I've turned the cameras on here is Mevagissi itself is uh, quite narrow. Somehow I don't think I'm ever going to bring, if I get another press supercar i don't know whether i'm ever going to bring it here because it is such a narrow place and this particular car i'm in right now has the most beautiful alloy wheels and they are just oh that you're just so paranoid about curbing them <laughs> and i'm also quite impressed that after four hours and 240 odd miles mrs petroped is literally the car in front we've managed to stay pretty much together for the whole way. Every now and again, she'd just get past a car and I'd get held up and then I'd have to try and catch her up, which is very difficult, must be said. And the other bit about this road is it's only really wide enough for one car, but it's still two way. So if you get a car coming the other way, you're absolutely stuffed. You can, you can either get up here in one go and just be really, really lucky, which I'm not gonna count my chickens yet, we might be, we might be. Are we gonna be lucky? Are we gonna get up here without meeting something coming the other way? We are, result. No, 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 see, told you, shouldn't have, shouldn't have counted my chickens. Here we go. So I'm gonna park the car and then I'm gonna close this video with the best view in Cornwall. Catch you very shortly. Well guys, we have made it to our lovely little piece of Cornwall. I hope you enjoyed that video. I just felt while I had sort of four and a half hours sat in the car, I may as well give you my impressions of having spent best part of three weeks with the car. I need to say a huge thank you to Audi UK for letting me experience the car for such a long period of time. I think it's when you spend lots of time in a car, lots of little things start to show themselves, the good and the bad. And, and I think I've given a pretty balanced view of the car. I'm really, really impressed with it. I love it to bits. And I am now a massive convert to coupe TTs. And I never thought I'd hear myself say that. But I'm going to draw it to a close here because I have a cold beer waiting. But I hope you enjoyed that one. If you have done so, please give me a thumbs up. Comments below are always welcome. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to Petrol Ped for plenty more content to come. And from beautiful Mevagissi here in Cornwall, I'll see you on the next film, guys. You take care. Drive safe.